You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Welcome to the Ms. Artastic Podcast. I am Kathleen McGivern and I am Ms. Artastic and the creator of everything in Artastic Nation from my Artastic Collective membership for our teachers, which by the way is opening in the first week of August. Just saying, you should be definitely bookmarking the website artasticcollective.com if you're an art teacher and you're interested in having your year fully prepped and also access to my um, members exclusive art teacher year-long growth course as well as hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of art lessons and exclusive um, channel drawing channel direct to drawing channel with exclusive videos just for the members And of course, because it's on there, there ain't no ads. Anyway, um, I'm also the creator of the over 500 art resources and lessons in my Teachers Pay Teachers store, this podcast, my blog, and the Ms. Artastic YouTube channel. Basically, Google Ms. Artastic, you'll find it. Anyway, in this episode, I am going to talk about how you can bring YouTube into your classroom in some positive ways ways that you can use it to teach new art making skills and techniques to your students whether you're in class teaching remote learning or if students are in class and need new skills or processes to learn or explore or maybe you want to visit a gallery but don't have the budget or it's just not possible with where your school is um or maybe you want to have a fun drawing tutorial tutorial to use in those odd 10 minutes left in class when a lesson ended early or to allow as a when you're done for your fast finishers no matter the age right Uh, let's look at some cool ideas for using YouTube in your art classroom this year or the upcoming year YouTube for learning new art making techniques So with your middle school or high school kids, you can definitely invite them to find an art making technique or process done by an artist on YouTube and have them follow the tutorial to learn that new skill. Lots of professional artists have YouTube channels and this is a great way for kids to learn from artists when you can't have the artist come to your classroom all the time to do a demonstration or give an artist talk if you're teaching acrylic paints then maybe have um an exploration assignment where kids can look up acrylic painting techniques or a tutorial on youtube and they can pick one to do in class or same for any medium or art process whether it is ceramics or photography Let them explore a video to learn a new technique from a professional artist. There are amazing videos out there and these students probably have technology in their pockets that they can use. Again, I'm talking about middle school, high school, right? So not necessarily, I'm not talking about elementary. (laughs) Okay. Uh, So they can use that, right? So I am sure they will love you for letting them explore YouTube on their phones in class. And also I'm like, this is a respect thing, right? Uh, And I'm going to assume that this is like worked up to. I wouldn't suggest this in the first couple weeks, right? This is something kids work up to. Um, and you can obviously have that discussion about the use of technology and using it for learning, but that's, that's, that's your role. All right. So I am sure they'll love you again, letting, for letting them explore YouTube on their phones in class and huge credibility points for you, our teacher engaged. Your kids definitely will be. Okay, so check it out um, and see what you can explore and find on YouTube because, hey, there are lots of skills and there's it's always cool learning from other people, right? Like That's why teachers have professional development, right? We're learning from other teachers, not always from the same course, the, just the administrators or just the same teachers at our school, but learning from other people or having talks from guests that come into our schools 
or as artists ourselves, like we learn from other artists and we get to learn new skills, right? So kids getting exposed to other artists, not just your style of doing something is is just honestly just adding another layer of their education, right? When used in a positive way. And that is, so that's part of the teaching as well. It's like using YouTube for a, in a positive way because it's evolving rather, rather quickly. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of cool things happening. So I, I encourage you to let that blossom in a structured and positive way. So YouTube for art lesson ideas. So you can also find an endless supply of art lesson ideas on YouTube. You can type in your theme, such as Alma Woodsy Thomas, or Rainforest, or Ocean, and the word art lesson, obviously. Um, and hit search, poof, scroll, preview the lesson, and hit play for your students. Or use it as inspiration for creating your own lesson, or you can use it to learn the lesson yourself and then do the demonstration in your own classroom yourself, right? So different ways to use it. For some fun elements of art and principal design art lessons that allow any mediums or me any mediums or materials, as well as just some other ideas, uh, check out my YouTube channel. It has ready to play art lessons that are classroom friendly and are taught by another teacher, which is me. YouTube for drawing tutorials. So YouTube has an endless supply of drawing tutorials out there. Lots of people have their favorite channels they love to subscribe to and watch. So find your own fun classroom friendly channel to subscribe to. These drawing tutorials are perfect to use when you have an awkward 10 minutes left in class or to use on days when you're exhausted and you just need a little, little support from another teacher. So, <laughs> AKA a video. They're good for teaching technical drawing skills and are wonderful for fine motor development. As well, uh, you can create a playlist for your students and have the link to the list um, on your classroom blog or your site, wherever. We're all pretty awesome at using technology now. <laughs> uh, uh, it was such a short time ago when we had, we were panicking with tech and now we're like, ah, I got this. Anyway, life is silly. <laughs> so kids can go watch, go check out your playlist or wherever your list that you create, um, a list of videos that you have pre curated for them to check out and they can follow along as a, when you're done activity. So you can let them, if you have classroom iPads or classroom tech or whatever, um, they can go, or even at home, like, as, like, homework. I don't do, like, if you do homework, I don't know. I feel like I hear the people, it's not like where I am, we don't even have grades anymore. <laughs> and there was no homework. Or, like, nothing. We don't have detention. Like, none of that, none of that exists. But, uh, I'm in BC. And vegetarians and vegans are also very popular. <laughs> like me. <laughs> But so, uh, but I hear, I think that some people still do those things. Obviously, most people do grades. That's pretty new here that we're getting rid of grades, not getting rid of assessment. It's just renaming it <laughs> anyway. And it's not everywhere in BC, just some districts. I forget what I was talking about. To be honest, I got distracted again and this happens. This is why I have to write notes. Oh yeah. So yeah. Basically create, um, how you guys when you're done. So if you have tech or whatever, um, available to you, you can, or classroom blog or like, oh yeah, I was talking about homework. That's right. Whatever. If you, if you want kids to be able to access a pre curated list, create a list of videos that you would like them to see. And these drawing tutorials are also perfect for your younger students. So. For classroom friendly drawing tutorials, make sure you check out my YouTube channel, Ms. Artastic, and don't forget to subscribe as I add new videos every week. So check out the link to my channel in the show notes on my blog or the description of this podcast. YouTube gallery visits. So a lot of big galleries, such as the Museum of Modern Art, will create videos that explore some of the shows that are curated at their galleries. And these are done professionally and are amazing resources to show your students as it's not also 
not always possible to take to ki to take kids to these galleries. So bring them to your classroom. So search up your favorite gallery or some of the big galleries in our world and see if they have a YouTube channel that you can explore. And you can also use YouTube for artist talks. Can't have an artist come talk to your kids? Well, you can look up artist talks on YouTube and you can be surprised at what you might find on the old YouTube. Plus, you get to pre-watch it, right? Because um, if you've ever been to an art opening, like an actual art gallery opening, you can imagine that the artist uh, lifestyle is kind of like an underground subculture, right? So <laughs> not always something that you want to take kids to, to be honest. Sometimes, depends, right? Depends on the gallery. But uh, not always kid-friendly. That's usually why they're at night. <laughs> but, uh, and also the artist talks sometimes might not always be subject matter that are appropriate for kids, depending on their age, right? Uh, as art goes, artists go deep, right? Looking into their soul, exploring their imagination, creativity, identity, things they're interested in. And not all of that content is 100% something that all ages or uh, she'll be uh, exposed to yet. Uh, I love going to art gallery openings, so like that's my thing, yo. But uh, not, you know, kids of, I'm talking about kids of all ages. What I'm saying is you should definitely preview it. And with an art, a YouTube artist talk, you can definitely preview it and see if it's something that's appropriate for your classroom. That's kind of where I'm going at with this. I'm not saying... Don't do artist talks. Always artist talks. Hello. Um, but for children, <laughs> make sure you preview it. So you can do this, of course, with YouTube. Um, and we want to hear it from artists, right? So you can look up contemporary artists or artists in your area from your country and see if they have a channel or have done an artist talk somewhere like at a gallery or one of their shows, right? Usually uh, sometimes at our openings, uh, especially if it's for like a museum or a public gallery, they're often invited to do an artist talk, usually at the opening. Um, and sometimes the galleries or the artists will film that. So you can take a look, uh, especially if you have some artists in your area or um, it's really it's a really a great way to expose kids to artist talks um, that again you can preview you can bring these artist talks to your classroom you've already previewed it to make sure it's appropriate for your your classroom depending on right we all have different uh, regulations that's the word I'm looking for so uh, take a look at that um, and I highly recommend it, right? So lots of stuff is now being recorded for everybody to listen to. So I highly recommend that you do a search and do some digging and see what you can find. Um, and see if you can bring artist talks into your classroom. Something that generally is happening at galleries or museums and is not always accessible for everybody. Uh, so see if you can bring these into your classroom. Um, and that will obviously deepen the educate art educational experience for kids and in artist talks you really get to understand the artists in a very very different way right when i give an artist talk if it's one of my shows um i'm going to be able to tell people a little bit more about the work what's it what the current show has been influenced by people can including curators can ask questions um, and get to know the art so you can kind of hear some different perspectives and also you're hearing the artist's voice and not just having your own interpretation so it's kind of like a, a critique but you get to hear a lot of beautiful things even about the creative process that the artist has gone through to create something I always learn so much from an artist talk it's totally different also right because if you're talking to an artist one-on-one, -on -one, 
you're going to have a very different conversation compared to if you're listening to if you've gone to an artist talk and you're listening to an artist talk the artist has pre-prepared this and has taken the time to really like look into themselves and think about their creative process and then um, bring and then tie it in with their current show so I again can't uh, say enough especially if you're teaching high school or even upper middle school uh, artist talks most definitely are a really great way for kids to start seeing first of all careers in the arts what it, what different roles of an artist is right because it's not just sitting in your studio <laughs> making art and hoping for the best uh, it just doesn't work like that and there's the business side of it and part of the business side of it is getting a gallery show and then getting into a museum right and then on these show openings there's I mean there's different levels of big shows in museums there's like huge shows and then they have the smaller curated shows within the museum and you work your way up to those big shows whether it be a group show or the cherry on the cake is having a solo show in a big part of a big museum right that's your ultimate goal um as an artist and so listening to those artist talks I mean, hey, it's pretty inspirational, but it's kind of gives kids a, a deeper insight into what it is, what it really means to be an artist, right? Because it's not you're 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 wearing all the all the hats in that business when you're an artist. Well, my friends, that's the end of this episode. So your action item that I'm leaving you with, leaving you with is this: pick one of these to explore. So pick one of these YouTube inspirations to explore and try in your classroom so there are sites that you can add a youtube url to and it'll make the video safe for your classroom if your admin discourages youtube use also um maybe you can convince your i think that if you had youtube premium you don't have ads so maybe your admin wants to invest in that and you can write a proposal of why it's going to help for our education because it can, right? If you're carefully curating, then of course, there's a lot of value in it, right? So, um, yeah, and so anyways, you put the URL into these like safe YouTube sites or whatever they're called. I think the name changes often, but anyways, uh, and it will make the video safe for your classroom at, if your admin discourages YouTube use. I think their problem is with the ads, right? And the other things that you can see, but not necessarily the video themselves, I believe. So I guarantee your kids will engage in any of these options and it will of course be a wonderful way to bring technology into your classroom while simultaneously giving you a bit of a break while also providing inspiration. So um, for me, like when I teach, I try to give my kids a variety of media and uh, to listen to for a lesson. So even though I might do my best lesson, having a video either say it differently or reaffirm what I've taught, um, hopefully I've accessed different learners, right? Because everybody learns differently. Some I am not as jazzy as a YouTube video, right? So sometimes those, that, those videos can do things that are just different, right? Or are, are being said differently from what I've said. So sometimes I'll, I'll try to do both so that hopefully I access the variety of learners in my classroom. And in case somebody started daydreaming during one part, maybe they'll hear the other thing, right? I daydream, I will I will daydream all the time. So uh, I think this is a win-win-win situation. As well, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel as I have new YouTube videos being released each week, including, um, you can also find my podcast episodes there if you don't want to listen to them on Spotify or whatever you're listening to it to on. Yeah, so your subscription um, to my channel on YouTube helps me to continue to do these videos for you. So make sure you hit subscribe and search Ms. Artastic on YouTube. And well, my friends, that's it. So this is Kathleen McGivern, Ms. Artastic, signing out.